Hi guys, welcome back. This is chapter 1.2. Today we'll be learning about elements, compounds, and the periodic table. Elements are individually listed on the periodic table. That means every element has its own square. Okay, and in that square it tells you a lot of information about the, the element. It tells you uh, the, the symbol of the element, sometimes the name of the element, uh, atomic numbers, and sometimes atomic mass, depending on the table you're looking at. Some tables are better than others, but they all put the elements in a certain order of uh, similar properties and things like that. So now, this table is broken down into these things called periods and groups. Periods run left to right through the table, so they're essentially rows, and groups are columns that go top to bottom. All right, so there's periods and groups. Groups go top to bottom, columns go, uh, sorry, periods go left to right. And that's how the periodic table is broken down. Every, every element has a square, and those squares are, are arranged in periods, left to right, and groups, top to bottom. All right? Groups are numbered across the top of the periodic table, and periods are numbered down the left-hand side. So every group has a number, and these numbers are on top of every column. All right? And the period numbers are almost always found on the left-hand side. I don't think I've ever seen them on the right, but I'm sure there's a table that exists that has them there. Uh, the one that you'll be using will have the numbers on the left for the periods. Metals are on the left-hand side of the table. Nonmetals are on the right-hand side of the table. And the two are separated by this thing called a staircase. It's a zigzag line. I'll point it out to you when we, we see a periodic table. Uh, some people call it the zigzag. Some people call it the staircase. I'm a staircase guy. I call it the staircase. And, that, and, and the staircase indicates where these things called metalloids are found. And I'll show, the, I'll show you that in a minute. So here we have our periodic table. This kind of blanked out a little bit. Here we have period 4. So this is period 1 here, period 2, and period 3. They run this way. So period 2, period 3, and then period 4. Okay, and then obviously 5, 6, and 7. This is group two, so that's group one, group two, three, four, and so on, okay? So the periods are numbered on the left, the groups are numbered at the top, and this is how it's broken down. Every element has a square, just like that. Now this is the element sodium, Na is sodium. Now you're gonna notice that, that the elements have abbreviations, and the abbreviations are either one or two letter. If it's a one-letter abbreviation, such as nitrogen, it will be a capital block letter, capital N for nitrogen. If it's a two-letter abbreviation, such as cobalt, C-O, the second letter is always lowercase. The first letter, oops, sorry guys, sorry about that. Let me get back to where I was. There we go. The second letter is always lowercase. The first letter is always capital. So for cobalt, capital C, lowercase o. For nickel, capital N, lowercase i. For nitrogen, capital N. Now some of these elements you may not know the names of. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, I'll, personally, I'm going to give you a table that has all the names on it and all the symbols listed. You don't have to memorize them. Now some of them you're just going to flat out remember it because you use them all the time. They're just extremely common, such as carbon and oxygen, sodium, lithium, potassium. You just use them all the time. Okay, now some of the elements and their, and their uh, abbreviations make sense. Carbon is C, nitrogen's N, those make sense. Starts with a C, starts with an N, okay, we're good. Sodium is Na, hmm, S and Na, that's weird. Gold, gold is AU, AU, huh? They come from the Latin, okay? Remember, some of these elements have been known for a long, long time, and they were named a long, long time ago. And they use the Latin for these for these elements because they've been named for so long. Now, I have a little joke. I like to tell jokes and keep you guys on your toes. Let's imagine you're sitting on your porch right now, and you have a coin of gold in your hand, and you're admiring your beautiful gold coin. And some rapscallion comes by and swipes your gold from you. First of all, you shouldn't be looking at your gold outside because gold is very valuable. And second of all, uh, put that in a vault. Okay. Now, some rapscallion just stole your gold, took off and ran down the street with your gold. Ha, ha, ha. What are you going to say? You're going to say, hey, you, you stole my gold. Come on now. That's pretty funny, right? That's comedy gold, right? 
double pun there. I'm telling you, it's terrible. Yes, I have a very peculiar sense of humor. But hey, some people laugh. Some people don't. Okay, so here's a periodic table. Now, you can see there's a lot of information on this thing. Tons. You can easily get lost in a periodic table if you don't just kind of calm down and let yourself just learn about it. Now, remember I told you about the zigzag line, right? There it is, right there. There's the zigzag line, also not known as the staircase. It separates metals from nonmetals. So the nonmetals are over here. The metals are over here. And the metalloids are right here, above and below the staircase. And that will be these elements that are in green on this table. Okay, So find all the ones that are green. These are metalloids. Now aluminum is the exception to my staircase rule. Oops, I guess I'm in the way here. Let me, my, let me get my face out of the way here. There we go. So there's the metalloids. Above and below the staircase are metalloids. So if we were to let's back out of this a little bit. If you were to look above and below... Okay, and then it should continue that way. Above the staircase, below the staircase, those are metalloids. Now, aluminum, however, is an exception. Now, notice how aluminum is not in green. Aluminum is actually in blue because aluminum is a metal. Aluminum is classified as a metal, even though it's below the staircase. So it's the exception to the rule. Now, over here, hydrogen is on the left hand side of the table but hydrogen is not a uh, metal hydrogen is actually a non-metal and hydrogen is over on this side of the table for reasons we'll get into later but you just have to remember that hydrogen is certainly not a metal hydrogen is a non-metal aluminum is not a metalloid aluminum is a metal even though it's under the staircase and you would have thought it was a metalloid it's actually not it's a metal okay so just keep that in mind and let's put my put my face back. There we go. All right. Now each block holds a different element. The vertical column is a group of elements that have similar chemical properties. So if you were to look at say group one, group number one, all those metals kind of behave the same. They all kind of do similar things. Not the same, similar. Okay. Um, now, there's two systems for numbering the groups in the periodic table. There's the letter, sorry, the number and letters uh, way. That's kind of been around for a little while. It's kind of old. Uh, and then there's a new way that numbers them 1 through 18 with no letters. So you may have saw that. If you look back at this table, I'll show it to you. Look at, say, group number 1. Group number 1. It's got group 1A, and then under its parentheses, 1. Look over here. This is group 3B or group 3. Now, I prefer the number in parentheses. It's what I learned with. It's what I was brought up with. And I think it works better. Um, I think having the letters in there confuse people. But, hey, um, it's my course, so I'm going to teach it the way I want to. I'm going to teach you using the I, what's called the systematic IUPAC way. IUPAC is the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. So we're going to use that. They're the ones who make all the rules. And I'm going to follow their rules because everybody else does. Okay, so we're going to use a parentheses number, even though sometimes the book might use the, uh, the 8A and 3A and all that stuff. I don't use them. I use the uh, 1 through 18 method. So just keep that in mind that uh, I'll be using this IUPAC method right here. I will not be using the, the number letter method. I think it's confusing for students. Now the horizontal row, that's known as the period or periods. The periods are numbered 1 through 7. So down the row, down down the left-hand side of the column, you'll see the numbers 1 through 7. Now the periods uh, 6 and 7 have a set of, have a, what they call a set apart or a set down. Um, those elements are, are unique and special. We don't really talk about them much in this course. They're known as the lanthanides and the actinides. Um, we're not going to concern ourselves with those at all because they're, the chemistry gets really complicated down in there. Uh, interesting, but complicated and far beyond the scope of this course. So you don't have to worry too much about those. 
Um, a staircase shaped line which begins at boron separates metals from nonmetals, and the elements that are bordered by the line, with the exception of aluminum, are your metalloids. So that's kind of what we just covered, but it's all nicely written down here for you so you can have it for your notes. And there we have it. There's our metalloid line. So here's the staircase again. You can see it. There you go. Staircase. Notice how aluminum is not listed as a metalloid. Aluminum is most definitely a metal. Okay. But as you can see, above and below the staircase, these are metalloids except for aluminum. Aluminum is most definitely a metal. And here I just thought I'd throw this slide up here just because a lot of you guys want to go into the health sciences field. Here are some elements that are extraordinarily important for living things. Of course, you know, we have iron, manganese, molybdenum, copper and zinc. And then over here, selenium, iodine, probably some surprising ones, you know. Uh, calcium, magnesium, of course, everyone knew that. Sodium, potassium, so here's a magnesium, there's calcium. Sodium, potassium, those are, you know, very essential. Uh, part of the electrolytes, chlorine and fluorine are, you know, pretty required for nutrients and health. Pretty cool, huh? I mean, these things are all just chemicals, right? Everything in, everything in nutrition and biology and all that stuff, it's a lot of chemistry. Just a ton of chemistry going on there. It's a very fascinating field. Now, we're into, and now we're going to move into uh, chemicals. Or pardon me, compounds. Excuse me. We're going to talk about compounds now. Now, compounds combine with elements in specific ratios. Like, for example, H2O. Specific ratio. Two hydrogens, one oxygen. Specific ratio. Um, H2O2 is a different compound. It's got a different ratio. This is water. This is hydrogen peroxide. This is good to drink. That's good for cleaning out cuts. Okay? Or just, I should say disinfecting cuts. So, different formulas, different compounds. Now, a chemical formula, which is very what we've been showing you for, for a minute here, but now we're going to explain it. Chemical formula shows that, basically it tells you how many um, of each element or atom you have in a compound. Okay? Chemical formula identifies both the type and the number of particles of each element in a compound. So, for example, H2O2, H2O, C6H12O6. That's sugar. Now, notice the letters are all on the same line, and the numbers are all subscripted to the right. Okay, that's how chemical formulas are written. First, you write the letter, or letter or the symbol of the element or atom. Then, subscript it to the right. You write the number that are involved in the formula. So, in this case, it's C6. So, there's six carbons. H12. There's 12 hydrogens. O6. There's six O, or oxygen. Okay? The amount of atoms is always subscripted to the right. Now, Notice an H2O. It should have been H2O1. But just like in mathematics, if it's a 1, you don't have to write it. The 1 is what they call assumed to be there. Okay? So you wouldn't write H2O1. That's not proper. But you would write H2O. That is proper. The 1 is assumed. Just like in math. Okay? Pretty cool, huh? Pretty simple. But very powerful. Simple but powerful. Don't you love it? All right. Now that leads us into section 1.3, math count. We'll stop the video here. We'll pick it up again and do section 1.3. Get ready for the math, guys. Here we go. I know you're all waiting for it. It's really, it's not that bad, guys. Just relax. Stay calm. You're going to get through this. No problem. See you in the next video.